Hey guys, welcome to today's episode and we have Matt Hiller and we are so excited. They have created, him and Wade, have created the most amazing book. You guys have to even see what it looks like when you get it delivered. It's amazing. It's called The End of Diet Wars Starts Now. So Matt, welcome. Yeah, no, we worked on the uh, Ultimate Nutrition Bible for three years and we're so proud of it. Excited. It's finally out in the world. Oh my gosh, I love it. So tell me what inspired you guys to write the book? First of all, everybody needs to eat. And if you're focused on your health or your fitness goals, you're focused on nutrition. And nutrition is always a huge part of the puzzle. So Wade and I have been experimenting with diets for 30 years each. I, I did my first diet when I was 15 years old. Came home from school. My uncle told me I was fat and it hurt. And I decided to lose weight. So I went from 190 to 147 in six months, running and following a ketogenic diet. Then from there, I got into bodybuilding and went from 147 to 235. Then I, I dieted down for a bodybuilding show went from, and I lost 64 pounds in 14 weeks. I don't recommend that. And of course, then I got into personal training and helped you know, my best friend lose 191 pounds in 18 months. I had other clients lose more than 150 pounds. So I've always been obsessed both for myself and my clients to figure out what the ultimate nutrition strategy would be. And for a long time, I was a keto zealot. I thought that was the answer for everyone until I started getting clients that didn't respond well to it. And one of my first messages for everyone is there's no perfect diet for everyone. There's certain people that are going to thrive in a ketogenic diet. Certain people will do really well on a plant-based diet. And my business partner, Wade, he's been plant-based for 20 years. So we argued for probably a decade plus on which diet was better and why. Is The more we argued, the more common ground we found. For example, no matter what diet you're on, if you optimize your digestion, everything works better. So adding things like enzyme and hydrochloric acids and the right probiotics will improve your results no matter what diet philosophy you follow. And over time, we realized that there's genetic differences. We can talk about nutrigenomics because that's a real game changer to help people figure out what's the best diet for them. You can use blood work. You can use gut biome tests. All of these new tools help us really hone in on the best foods for you and the best diet strategy for you. So I want to really hone in on what you just said, because one of the things that I believe of why someone decides whether they want to do keto or carnivore or Mm plant-based is because let's say they're living a certain way and then all of a sudden they start doing carnivore and then they go, oh my gosh, I feel like a million bucks. This diet is for me. Or they start vegan and then they you know, stay there. And so in their mind, they're like, this is the diet that I need to stay on for the rest of my life. And one of the things that I've been really studying is a diverse microbiome. And the fact that the more diverse your microbiome is, the healthier your microbiome is. And the way that you actually get a more diverse microbiome is by introducing more foods. And so you know, I, one of the things I do is, you know, I sit down with people and I go, okay, so tell me what you're eating, right? And they literally, like, you can actually track it. Like, we just did it for fun for a week. They're eating the same eight foods over and over and over again. And so I'm thinking to myself, listen, we need to work on getting a more diverse microbiome. And I, I love the fact that you kind of talk about, hey, You know, it's not just this or this or this. We can play around with it. And to be honest, for me, the more diverse my food intake is, the healthier I am. What What's your opinion on what I just said? Yeah, having say the current belief is that having a diversity of bacteria in your gut is better, which is probably accurate. And one of the things we talk about in the book which I think everybody can follow, no matter what diet philosophy you're you're doing, is eating more fermented foods. So there was some research done last year comparing fermented food versus fiber 
And in terms of immune boosting response, the fermented foods beat the fiber. Now, fiber has other benefits we can touch upon, but yeah, adding things like sauerkraut, nato, kefir, all of these fermented foods help introduce healthy probiotics into your gut and will improve your health. Now, eating a diverse array of foods is an interesting question and topic. So I think from a fermented or from a probiotic perspective, it's true. And we have a chapter called The Simplest Secret where we talk about actually eating the same meals. I mean, we, we recommend having like 12 meals, 12 winning meals that you rotate. Because if your goal is weight loss, what they found is that the more foods you eat, the more cravings you have. So the only caveat to your advice is if somebody's trying to lose weight, we tend to recommend eating a, a, a smaller variety of foods to, to diminish food cravings. So anyways, that, that, that is a good yeah. suggestion, especially if you're eating prebiotic foods, you know, things like banana, there's a whole list of them that you can eat that'll help, you know, feed your probiotics. So one of the things you talk about is that, you know, 97% of the people have failed to lose weight long-term. Like they might lose weight, right, for, for a little while. And then all of a sudden it's like, up, oh, they've gained that weight again. So mm -hmm. give us just a kind of a smidgen of some of the tips that you suggest that people can actually, whichever plan they decide to do, that it actually can be sustainable for long-term. I think the, the first key is to realize that we all have ancient wiring that's literally tens of thousands of years old that has one goal and one purpose, and that's to keep you alive. In times of famine, you know, hard winters where you couldn't find vegetation and you maybe had to hunt for weeks to find and, and kill another animal to eat, our bodies had to develop these survival mechanisms that kept us alive. And some of the things it does, it lowers leptin, it lowers testosterone, it lowers your thyroid function, it decreases or burns muscle mass. And on the flip side, it increases ghrelin, which is the hunger hormone. It increases NPY in the brain, which makes you insatiable, which I experienced one, once and I was hungry for two years. So we have all of these starvation survival mechanisms that kick in when we diet too hard, too fast. So I would say that is the primary reason why most people fail. These starvation survival mechanisms kick in and we live in a world where we literally have hyper palatable foods available to us at, at all times, right? 24 hour supermarkets, Uber Eats, et cetera, et cetera, where I can push a button and get food that's loaded with sugar, loaded with fats, loaded with salt, and loaded with flavor. They're, they're designed to be as addictive as possible. So because of these two realities, again, we have these, this ancient wiring that wants us to eat. It wants us to have excess body fat. Why? Because our chances of survival are better combined with all of the food marketing and the availability of hyperpalatable foods it creates an environment that's incredibly difficult to overcome. So my first tip is, if your goal is to lose weight, first, think long-term. For example, if somebody has 50 pounds of body fat to lose, you know, pick at least a year, ideally 18 months, two years. There's no rush. You want this final weight loss phase to be it. You don't want to be repeating the yo-yo patterns, which almost everyone does. Right, that 97%, they lose weight. A lot of them will lose the weight only to regain it. Their metabolism is slower. And then most people will try about six times and then they give up permanently. So my recommendation is you want to keep your body safe. You know, we want to prevent these starvation survival mechanisms from kicking in. So we talk about a lot of things like using diet breaks, refeeds taking your time, and it doesn't mean you won't lose weight relatively rapidly, but those diet breaks help you rebuild your metabolism a little bit, it helps prevent that metabolic adaptation, which means your metabolism is getting slower and you're burning less and less calories. For anyone who's dieted for a long time and lowered their calories lower and lower and lower, there's a point where 
You're eating 800 calories a day and you're not losing weight anymore. And that's where people just give up. Like there's, you can't go further and further, right? You start getting health issues and nutrient deficiencies. We talk about how to rebuild your metabolism if you're if you are in that position. So there's things called reverse, there's a strategy called reverse dieting, which can help you rebuild your metabolism if it's if you've damaged it by dieting too hard. One of the other keys is you want to focus on improving the calories out. How do you do that? Probably the number one way is anabolism. What does that mean? It means that you you do resistance training at least three days a week and that muscle building helps really increase your calorie expenditure, both in the muscle building phase and permanently because muscle mass burns about 300% more calories than fat. We talk about improving your NEAT, which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which can account for 500 to 1,000 calories a day, which is a lot. So for example, right now I'm at a stand-up desk. You know, walking, walking with your dog, doing micro movement throughout the day can have a massive impact. You can use cold exposure as another way to improve calories out. So there's a lot of tactics and strategies in the book, but in general, take your time, make sure that you're mentally prepared and cycle in and out. Like do like a three or four week weight loss cycle, do a diet break for one or two weeks. And what a diet break is, is you go to maintenance. You're not trying to lose anymore. You're trying to maintain your body weight, which means you're going to eat a little bit more. And again, those diet breaks seem to really help prevent that metabolic adaptation. I don't know about you guys, but I am stressed. And if you're feeling overwhelmed this holiday season, then I get it. With all the family get togethers, it is just a relentless source of stress. But anyway, there is something that I've got called Stress Guardian. And it's actually made by Bioptimizers, the people who make the magnesium breakthrough, which I love, love, love. But anyway, they are literally made this new product. It has 14 adaptogenic herbs and it just regulates your stress. I just actually took some right this second. And it's awesome. If you go to stressguardian.com slash waste away and put in waste away for 10% off your first order, it's stressguardian.com slash waste away. Go there now. I couldn't agree more with that. I agree 100% because we literally have so many people who write in questions in the podcast and literally they're like, I started it. I started doing intermittent fasting and I started doing more keto and this and that, whatever they're doing. And they're like, I did so good. And now I'm on a stall. Help, what should I do? And what you just said is always the answer. It's the reverse dieting and adding those calories back in and just saying, okay, I'm going to actually give myself a break. I'm not going to focus on weight loss. And then they they end up losing more weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the psychologically as well, like when you're in a calorie deficit, it requires a lot of willpower to maintain that. You know, it, it's, it's draining. You're, you're literally, you don't have as much energy as you typically would, especially as you get deeper into a diet. So there's a lot of psychological benefits to a diet break as well. You know, you want to be resourced and you don't want to be, again, completely depleted and just continue pushing and pushing yourself. And that's when the starvation survival mechanisms kick in. And just to divert a little bit, because it's a huge part of any weight loss program, you need to optimize your sleep. You know, there's a study where they took two groups. One group slept five and a half hours. The other group slept eight and a half. And the group that only slept five and a half hours, almost 50% of their weight loss was lean muscle mass, which is the last thing that you want on a weight loss program. So the better you sleep, and of course you need to sleep enough and you want high quality sleep, you're getting natural growth hormone release, which helps burn body fat. And especially for men, when you're getting enough REM, you get test, that's where testosterone production occurs. So it's really important to optimize your sleep, especially during a weight loss cycle. Yeah, and you guys have heard me millions of times before. I am such a huge advocate. Like, I'm not joking. 
the best magnesium out there is by optimizers. And you guys know that if you use my code, Chantel Ray 10, you get 10% off, but it is hands down the only one that has all the forms of magnesium that you need. And so I am such a big proponent of that. I do want you to address one other thing. I have had, this is a side note with the magnesium. I am such a huge proponent of magnesium, but I'm also a big proponent of adding potassium because I mm. feel like what, what I've been seeing, I've been having a lot of people come to me and they're like, I love the magnesium, but, and I'm taking it, but they're getting leg cramps at night. Mm -hmm. And I said to them, you need to get your magnesium and your potassium levels both. If your magnesium levels are too high and you're, you're not eating enough potassium, you need to either be eating enough potassium in your diet or be adding potassium in. Can you address that at all? First of all, thank you. I, I'm like, you know, one of the big light bulb moments for me, especially in the ketogenic diet, this was a few years ago, was realizing the criticalness of potassium. And you'll be excited to know we're working on several products that are going to help people optimize their potassium ratio. So right now, I'd say 99 plus percent of people have a major imbalance of sodium to potassium. Mm. Consuming a lot of salt. Salt, salt is essentially sodium chloride. So most people are consuming plenty of, of sodium. There's no, and I don't have a problem with sodium per se. I think sodium's great, huge proponent of consuming a lot of salt. I mean, consult your doctor if you got blood pressure issues, maybe. But even with the blood pressure issues, and again, I'm not a medical doctor, but a lot of blood pressure issues seem to go away when people increase their potassium dosage. So most people are over-consuming sodium, under-consuming potassium. And if you're in a low-carb diet, the odds that you're even more deficient in potassium is almost a certainty because typically potassium comes from potatoes, bananas, plantains, et cetera. So if you're not consuming those foods, where are you getting your potassium? And sodium and potassium need to exist in a certain ratio, typically three to one, potassium three, sodium one. And even electrolyte drinks, their sodium to potassium ratio is, is way off, typically has too much sodium, not enough potassium. And we're working on, let's call them next gen electrolyte drinks, as well as some other sodium to potassium ratio um, food products that you'll be able to have in your kitchen and optimize your potassium intake. So, you know, I'm a huge proponent of potassium. I think it's a game changer. It's really the molecule of hydration. And when I went from not consuming potassium to adding that on a ketogenic diet, I went from dehydrated to hydrated. I couldn't hold on to water without the potassium. So a lot of people are dehydrated even though they're drinking a lot of water and that's because of an, an electrolyte imbalance. So we definitely need to add a lot more potassium to our diets. And again, stay tuned because in 2024, we're coming out with a lot of solutions around that. Yeah, and honestly, they say that you need between 3,500 and 4,200 um, milligrams of potassium. And if you actually look at your diet and how much you're getting, it's actually really hard to get 4,200 milligrams of potassium. Exactly. Especially, like you said, if you're on a ketogenic diet, that's almost impossible to get that because if you're trying to stay keto, you know, the things that have really high potassium, like sweet potatoes and potatoes, most of people are trying to stay away from. So yes, I will be, you know me, I'll be screaming it from the rooftop um, of why you guys, your products are literally the best. And you guys, I just want to say one more time, getting all seven forms of magnesium transforms your stress and your performance, not just your sleep, but it also, you know, with your weight loss, like he said, if you're not getting your sleep, but then also it just, plays a critical role in so many functions of your body. So that magnesium, potassium, and sodium levels for sure. I want you to talk a little bit about digestion for just a second, because optimizing the efficiency and effectiveness of digestion is absolutely crucial. And 
there is no one that is more passionate about digestion than me. And, you know, just so you know, um, between the age of like 20 to 23, I was bulimic. Okay. So I threw up every single day. And then when I was pregnant with my son, not wanting to, um, I threw up every single day. I threw up about six times a day just because I was so nauseous. I didn't want to at that time. But because of that, my stomach acid is just not good. And so I want you to talk about digestion and I want you to talk about um, the product of HCL. And I want to talk about masszymes and what's the reason that you didn't put HCL in the masszymes and all of that. Sure. First, let's zoom out and just talk about re- what n- real nutrition is, and it's going to tie back to digestion. Most people think, okay, I eat good food, I'm good. But there's a lot of stages that the food goes through. And in our opinion, what nutrition is or what nutrification is, of course, you start by consuming good food. Your body has to break those down into absorbable molecules. Your body has to absorb those molecules, and then those molecules become part of your body. That's the metabolization of those molecules. So what we want to do, no matter what diet you're on, is really optimize each stage of it. Okay, First stage is preparation and anticipation. You smell the food, you look at the food, and actually your brain will look at the food and, for example, start secreting amylase in your mouth in anticipation for carbohydrates. So your brain literally tells your body, start producing amylase, which breaks down carbs. Then you eat the food, and this is the secretion phase. And you talked about HCL, which is known as hydrochloric acid, which is essentially stomach acid. And what happens is, as we get older, especially late 30s, 40s, and sometimes a lot earlier, your body starts producing less and less hydrochloric acid. Now, hydrochloric acid has a lot of function, including breaking down the food into usable molecules, usable nutrients. It also helps kill different bugs, parasites, bad bacteria, et cetera. So it has a lot of utility, very important in the the overall health. And then from there, your body releases bile and then enzymes. And enzymes, in my opinion, are one of the most underrated supplements in general. The enzymes are not new. They've been around for a long time. And, you know, Wayne and I have been using high dosages of protein digesting enzymes called proteolytic enzymes for 20 years. And it made such a difference, I think, in our health. You know, when you, people talk about protein all the time. And again, as we get older, we tend to absorb less and less of the protein. The answer is use protein digesting enzymes with your protein So you can get all the value from the food that you eat. And I think that's the way to look at hydrochloric acid and enzymes. It really helps you get the maximum value from every meal that you eat. By the way, we haven't announced this, so this is a bit of a a leak. But we have released Masszymes 4.0. We haven't announced it, but if you have Masszymes right now, you're getting the 4.0 formula, which is 30% stronger than the previous one. And we've been testing not just our enzymes in our lab, but every competitor. And the second, we're 200% better than the second best enzyme. And Mazzimes 4.0 breaks down protein into a pool of amino acids and peptides in 30 minutes. No other enzyme blend does that. So again, Mazzimes 4.0 is absolutely incredible. And you can use it as well during fast. I think there's a lot of benefits to improving autophagy and cleaning cleaning a lot of things in your body. But hydrochloric acid is critical, and we have another product called HCL Breakthrough, which you mentioned. And the reason we separated the two is, one, you know, some people have more of a hydrochloric acid issue. Some people have more of an enzyme deficiency issue. So we wanted to kind of separate the two. There are enzymes in HCL Breakthrough, obviously not at the same strength and potency as Masszymes. So you know, it, you can't cram everything in one capsule. That's the challenge. I mean, you, we have limited space, so we we make decisions around that. But that's incredible. And then from there, your food keeps traveling through your intestinal tract, and of course enters the 
gut biome stage. And then the probiotics, your gut biome continues to break down the food. Your probiotics actually produce molecules. So one of the things we test in the lab is what molecules are the probiotics producing? They'll produce neurotransmitters. They'll produce enzymes. They'll produce vitamins, all kinds of molecules. And of course, bad bacteria will produce toxins. So that's why it's really important that you want to populate your gut, your gut biome with the right probiotics. And we have two pro products that are just incredible. One is P3OM, which is a one single strain, and it kills gram-negative bacteria. So it's incredibly powerful at killing bad guys or bad bacteria. It also acts almost like an enzyme. It actually breaks down protein. And out of all the probiotics we've tested over the last four years, there's only two probiotics we've tested that have that capability, and they're, they're incredibly powerful. Another product we have is called Microbiome Breakthrough, which is probably one of our most underrated products because in terms of building a healthy gut biofilm and basically sealing your gut, it is the best product we've tested. So it's really designed to do that and populate the walls of your gut with incredibly healthy strains. So again, a huge proponent of microbiome breakthrough and P3 alum to really optimize your gut. And then of course, the final stage is, is elimination. I recommend a squatty potty, you know, put those in all your toilets. I think it just helps the, the final stage, make it smooth. And I want you to see if I'm right when I say like HCL really breaks down the food in your stomach and Masszymes helps a little bit more with the food that's in your small intestines. And the that's HCL correct. really aids in protein digestion. Is that right? Because it helps, that HCL helps with the proteins a little bit better? Yeah, it does. I mean, the hydrochloric acid is like the first stage of secretion. And then the enzymes come in a little bit later. Your pancreas tends to release enzymes. But again, as we get older, enzyme levels, hydrochloric acids get lower. And we need to, in my opinion, supplement with them to keep us optimized. You guys, I'm so excited. We are doing a free masterclass for you. It's actually on nontoxicfamily.com slash masterclass. That's nontoxicfamily.com slash masterclass. And it's going to be all about how to get rid of your gut infections, how to get rid of parasites. If you have painful digestion, if you're suffering from poor sleep, if you've got constant exhaustion, massive joint pain, or skin issues, then you need to get rid of the parasites that are holding your body hostage. I'm going to tell you right now, you're thinking, I don't have parasites. I don't have parasites. Yes, you do. I have Crystal with me. Crystal, tell them your joke. Yeah. If you have a pulse, then you have a parasite or more. And the thing about parasites is they're sneaky. And even if they came back negative on a stool test that you did before, that doesn't matter. They can still be present. And so on this masterclass, we're going to teach you all the tips and tricks that you might have heard of, but didn't know how to use, like diatomaceous earth, pumpkin seed protocols, garlic and berberine and black walnut, because you can't do all of these things, but you need to select a few that work for you. So we're going to go through all of that in this masterclass. All right. And my son created a new site. It's called Non-Toxic Family. And if you're not following, go to nontoxicfamilynow.com or on Facebook, go to Non-Toxic Family. You'll see my son. He does all these great videos on how to be healthy. They're really great. And we actually put the mat free masterclass on this site. So it's nontoxicfamily.com slash masterclass and sign up for free. Look forward to seeing you guys. All right, I'm going to ask a listener question, and I kind of wish that Wade was on for this one, but let's see how you answer it. This one is from Brent in Rhode Island. I watched a movie called Game Changers and decided to go on a vegan diet. I'm mm -hmm. feeling okay, but there's something that's really making me think. I can't get B12 from a vegan diet, and the only way I can get it is if I take a supplement. Would God want me to do a diet where the only way that I could survive is to take a pill in order to do that? That's making me go, hmm, what's your thoughts? Well, I think God wants you to take supplements. That's my <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, I mean, again, all supplements are on some level made by 
natural things that are typically condensed and combined and you know ultimately it's all derived from nature but what do you, it's a great question and every diet has potential deficiencies and obviously the vitamin b's is a big one on a plant based diet and we really believe that even if you try to eat the best food on the planet that it's almost going to be impossible to be truly optimized. I mean, yeah, you can maybe get the minimum RDA requirements if you tried to find the most nutrient dense vegetation, you know, plants, vegetables, fruits. But the pro problem is most supermarkets, even organic food, don't have enough nutrients, right? It's almost impossible to get enough magnesium as an example. So one of my favorite chapters in the book is the micronutrient chapter. And we go through every micronutrient and every vitamin, and we talk about the most common deficiencies. Some micronutrients people get plenty of, like sodium, for example. People don't need to worry about sodium deficiencies or chloride deficiencies. But as we mentioned earlier, potassium, magnesium, vitamin Bs, if you're in a plant-based diet. So you know it's important to be smart about your diet, be very mindful about potential deficiencies. And we cover all of those in the Every Diet Decoded section of the book, where we go over the ketogenic diet, the plant-based diet, raw food diet, paleo diet, if it fits your macros diet. And we talk about the potential problems, the pitfalls that you can face. And again, supplements is where they come in because you can patch all of these potential deficiencies with the right supplementation. I am going to read you one more listener question and I'll preface it with, I, I made a joke on the podcast one time and I said something like, okay, everyone, go ahead and put your hand or put your hand in, and check your pulse. We're going to see how do you know if you have parasites? And then I said, oh, okay, do you have a pulse? Okay, you have parasites. And so this is where I'm not going to read the whole, I'm just going to do a quick glimpse of her. She has a very long message, but this is from Surrender in Jacksonville, Florida. She said, I liked your joke about how, the, how everyone has a pulse, has parasites. I'm sure I have them with all the symptoms that you talked about. What do you think is the best diet and the best supplements to be able to get rid of them? First of all, hydrochloric acid can help. Um, again, not a, I'm not a doctor. One time I I knew I had parasites and my practitioner recommended, and I did it, uh, I hyperdosed hydrochloric acid for about 60 days. I was taking, I think, 15 capsules a day. Again, not medical advice. I'm just sharing my, my story. Um, we also have another product. I think the new, the latest name, we had to rebrand it, but it's called Paraguardian. And... I think everyone should probably do a parasite cleanse once a year. Because again, especially if you're eating sushi, um, it's pretty common. So it's a, probably a good idea to clean house and just make sure that you don't you don't have issues. And typically, you do a 60-day cycle because you got to kill the eggs as well. So typically, the recommendation is you know, if you're doing some sort of parasite cleansing protocol, Make sure you do it for at least 60 days so that you're you're not just killing the parasites that are there, but the eggs as well. And again, I'm a big believer in doing that probably once a year. It's kind of like a spring cleaning strategy. So one of the things that I think you guys did better than any other book that I've read so far was your explanation of calories. Because I feel like there's people on two different... Yes, you take a look at this. And you guys, listen... We are giving away one lucky person. Look how amazing this looks. It's called the Ultimate Nutrition Bible. It is really amazing. But one of the things I love that you guys presented is talking about calories mm -hmm. because I want you to just give them a smidge of how you present calories in and calories out. Yeah, there's been so much debate around yeah. calories in, calories out. And there's two camps. One camp, says all you need to do is burn more than you eat, which is accurate. And then there's another camp that wants you to believe that there's magic, that 
calories in, calories out is not true. And if you manipulate this, then calories in, calories out don't matter. The reality is they're both accurate. And what we've done is I think we've really merged both camps together into the most accurate model that's been presented. So on the calories in, of course, you have carbohydrates, fats, protein, and fiber. And yeah, we could talk about ketones and alcohol, but let's just keep it to the major four. And the thing to be aware of, and I have, if I have any suggestion for everybody listening, is if you just increase your protein intake and increase your fiber intake, you're going to naturally start eating less because you're going to be fuller. Your satiety is going to be better. And especially if you're weight training or doing exercise, you're going to get better results. When you eat protein, your body has to burn about 25 to 30% of that protein or that energy to just break down the protein. Protein is difficult to break down. And with fiber, you tend to only absorb about 50% of the calories. So one key concept we talk about is net calories versus just gross calories or just general calories. And net calories is really what matters. And what a lot of people do, especially you know professional bodybuilders or competitive athletes, is they're decreasing their net calories by increasing their protein, increasing their fiber, and decreasing carbs and fats. So that's one side of it. But I think the calories out model we presented is the most complete comprehensive that I've ever seen. So that's what we talk about. If you increase your anabolism, you're going to burn more calories. If you have cold exposure, you're going to burn more calories. If you increase your NEAT, you're going to burn more calories. And what we're big proponents of, instead of just continually cutting calories lower and lower and lower, let's try to burn more calories, not just through exercise, which I think is important, but there's all these other mechanisms we can use to improve our calorie expenditure and not have to force ourselves to get into unsustainable low, low calorie levels. So I, I could not agree more. I've never heard the explanation of calories done so well. And it's such an aha because I feel like, like you said, people are in these two different camps. And there are some people who literally are like, eating, you know, 6,000 calories a day and, and, but they're keto. And then they're like, but I don't understand. I'm not losing weight. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And yeah. it's like, they're almost delusional. And I feel like this book, it's like, it makes you understand in the right way, not over here, not over here. It meets in the middle. One of the pictures that you have that are hysterical is you have like this big steak in your hand and Wade's got this like big celery in his hand and you guys are like, you know, the end of diet wars. What would you say that he's kind of, you've kind of brought in the middle, like maybe that he's taught you or you've taught him that maybe you kind of come to this like balanced place with each other? Yeah, so many things. I mean, Wade and I have truly built what I like to call kind of a meta mind, a universal mind of diet and health and nutrition understanding. First of all, um, I, I became a huge proponent of of water, like drinking water all the time. If you're watching me on video, you're probably seeing me take gulps every two minutes. It's just a habit at this point. Um, I introduced him to a book around water. Then he introduced me to some water technology. Um, Wade helped me get in shape, eating carbs. It was after some ketogenic phases, so learned the power of that. It, it, it's just been so much back and forth. Uh, Wade eats a big ass salad, which I've incorporated into my nutrition program many times. So it's just been a back and forth. I taught Wade about fats, healthy fats, fatty acids, because he was deficient in those. So yeah, it, it's just been a really powerful symbiotic relationship. Even when we were arguing, we were giving each other some gems that we could use. I love it. Well, listen, if you guys go to our Facebook page and we are going to pick one lucky winner, show them one more time that that amazing book. It's so cute. I love it. And it truly is amazing. This is one of the best nutrition and diet books I've ever read. I loved reading it and I've read every ounce of it. Usually I'll you know read like 80%. I read every ounce of it and really, really enjoyed it. So yeah. tell 
Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell them where they can get it. If you go to ultimatenutritionsystem.com forward slash waste away, you're going to get 10% off. But wait, there's more. We actually filmed a video course version of the entire book. We had four video editors make it look incredible. So it's visually engaging. Not only do you get the video course and the book, you also get a supplement book that you can download right away because we had to pull it out of the book. The book was actually twice the size that you, that it is. So there's a 200 page supplement guide. That's not just about our products, but every type of supplement. You get three cookbooks, you get from sick to superhuman and some other bonuses. So make sure that you take advantage of all of that incredible offer. And again, it's really designed to be your guide for life. You don't need to read it cover to cover, jump to the sections that you're interested in. And as your goals change, you can just keep reading and learning and applying and get the benefits. So again, and let me check the system. video course. Like if you if you're someone who's like, I'm not a big reader. I don't I like to listen to it. I like to watch it. You get the video course for free with the book. Tell them that code one more time. Yeah, it's ultimate nutrition system.com forward slash waste the way. The code is waste the way the 10% off. Check out the offers. They're absolutely amazing. Awesome. Well, Matt, it's always a pleasure talking with you and you guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now.